Okay, so you've seen the teaser video, and obviously now you've seen the board. Uh, I think it's time we cracked on and showed how I made this thing. Stop, stop, stop. Well, as you can see, guys, sometimes we all make mistakes. And in that case, I kind of forgot to press the button that makes, um, makes me record the sound. So as you can see, there's video, but no sound. So what we'll do is I'm going to watch the video with you, and I'm going to try and sort of say what it was that I was probably trying to say at the time. So, yeah, obviously, I've just got the uh, the MDF board. Uh, nice size, nice and smooth. Uh, cut to the same size, obviously, as a board, which is 30 inches by 22 inches. Um, and, yeah, I want to make several boards up, so I had several pieces cut. This is obviously the first of many. And the other plan I was going to have is I was going to build something on the top, put a framework around the edge of it, and then use the underneath as another sort of kill zone. Um, so that's kind of my plan for what I'm going to be doing with these boards. Uh, but obviously in this case, this is the first board I'm going to make. And yeah, let's sort of crack on with it. Again, I don't know why I'm frowning there, being that I frown the, the smallest of things. And I'm probably waffling on, you know what I do. Um, but yeah, let's get into it and let's carry on and find out how I made this kill zone board. So the first thing I did was to try and find some nice spaceship looking floor tiles. And as always, went to Thingiverse, uh, typed in spaceship floor tiles. And a few came up, but this is the one that I really liked just because it contains a whole variety of different looking, well, floor tiles. So I took it into the Photon Mono X. Uh, the reason I use this one as opposed to the M3 that I have from Anycubic is because this one has a larger build plate, meaning I can obviously get more tiles on in one go. As I knew I was going to be printing out loads and loads of these, um, yeah, I wanted to get as many on as I could. So obviously I've imported the, uh, the file I wanted. As you can see, I've resized it. These were about five, six millimeters thick. So I've reduced that down to just two millimeters thick because, well, there's no reason for them to be so um, so deep as obviously they're going to get glued down to a bit of wood. So the wood's going to keep uh, keep them nice and firm. And then it's simply a case of trying to fit as many tiles as I could on one sort of build plate, get them all ready, stick them on a USB, obviously pop that in the side of the printer, push a couple of buttons and yeah, away she goes. So each one of these didn't take too long at all, but obviously I did print, uh, well, rather a lot. So obviously while these were printing, I was cracking on and just getting the board sort of ready. It wasn't a whole lot to do, but the main thing I wanted to do was find the center of the board. Um, just because I was going to build from the center outwards, just so it looked nice and even. Um, and the only reason for this is, I've not exactly got OCD, but sometimes I do like things to look, well, look nice and neat. So yeah, found a center point, which wasn't obviously too difficult, even with my, uh, my limited math skills. Um, yeah, easy enough to do. And then once I started printing out some tiles, um, I started gluing them down. So I say, I did print out a whole load of these tiles, and there was one day where I was printing from about five o'clock in the morning um, to about midnight. Um, just because obviously, as you'll see, as this thing does get larger and larger, um, there are a whole load of tiles. And as you can see, I'm using the good old Gorilla Glue here, just because I find that the best one for sticking anything to anything. Plus you get a little bit of um, sort of leeway with this. Once you do put something down, You've got a good 15 minutes or so before it sort of fully hardens and secures everything. So if anything does need to be moved, um, yeah, you've got time to do so. So as you can see, I put loads of tiles down and then put a load of books on top just to uh, to help keep them in place. Um, I did the center ones obviously first, but I wanted to make sure they were sort of in position and weren't going to move. Just so when I put all the tiles around them, um, yeah, I wasn't going to have issues with things slipping and sliding. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I didn't really have a pattern initially. Um, that's why I printed off loads and loads of the same sort of tiles and actually had quite a lot left over at the end. Uh, so initially, I didn't really have a, a Scooby what I was doing. Um, I just printed off loads of tiles and then thought, okay, we'll have a little play around and see where they look best. I knew I wanted some sort of central design um, leading outwards. And the good thing is we say these tiles, there's so many combinations that you can sort of do with them. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And the fact they're obviously free tiles is awesome. So I've got the sort of centre bit done and it's made a nice big square. And I thought, well, I'll go all the way around this with these nice little small squares. Um, again, just to sort of make up a, a pattern kind of thing. But I was making it up, obviously, as I was going along. Uh, and again, as you can see, good old Gorilla Glue uh, does work wonders. So you do have to leave it for quite a bit of time to sort of fully harden. Uh, but that's fine. I wasn't in a big rush with this. As I say, I was still printing off loads and loads more tiles. So uh, yeah, no rush at all. 
So I kind of say it all the time, but the one thing I really, really love about having one of these 3D printers is the fact that I can print off things to whatever size I need. And that's exactly what I did here. As I say, I was kind of sort of making this up as I was going along. Um, so these outer bits, I could actually sort of work out what size I had left and then printed them to the exact size. At this point, I'd actually run out of the Gorilla Glue. Um, so I was using a bit of super glue. But also with the super glue, I'll just put a little dab in each corner. And there we go, it's all sort of finished, it's all down. Uh, but as you can see, there are quite a few gaps here and there. This is probably because obviously when I printed these, I printed them flat on the, um, the printer rather than sort of up at an angle with supports. So there is a bit of, um, I don't know what the correct term is, but the bottom plate, it does sort of spread out the first layer. Not by much, just a little bit here and there. So I could have gone round and sort of given these all the good old sanding, but that would have taken forever. So instead I thought I'd take forever and fill in the gaps with some grout. Uh, although the weird thing is I quite like doing this even though it is quite a laborious job um, it's very therapeutic um, yeah and to be honest, it doesn't take long at all because I say I, I'm always watching um, a movie or a Netflix series or something or even li listening to music uh, or even watching other people, people's YouTube videos uh, so I'm always doing something or watching something when I'm doing this and obviously that makes it a whole lot easier so yeah I was initially just going to fill in the, the sort of the larger of the gaps uh, but then I kind of got carried away and I just thought, ah, oh, I'm just going to go around filling in all of the gaps. And that's exactly what I did. But I think it was certainly worth spending the time doing this as the, the end result, obviously, I'm very happy with. And the fact I'm going to be using this board to play lots of games on, um, yeah, it's worth spending that extra hour or so doing something just because you're going to be spending, well, a whole lot more hours on the thing. So, yeah, once it's all sort of been, been put in, I waited a little while, then went over with, uh, with a wet wipe to sort of clean off any of the excess. And yeah, this is kind of how it's how it's left. And yeah, very happy with the, the layout, the sort of the overall design. Um, yeah, very pleased indeed. And the great thing is these kill zones fit just nicely on my desk, which is awesome. So yeah, that's it, all done, primed in black. And then basically gonna do some sort of dry brushing over the top of this. Um, initially, I started off dry brushing with grey, just to obviously get rid of obviously all the black and give it a bit of. Uh, Bit of a worn sort of look while i'm doing that i just want to say a big shout out and a thank you to all my patrons as well as my sponsors uh, for helping fund this channel so i can keep buying new bits and pieces to keep making more videos for you guys so it's kind of like a win-win for all of us so yeah link at the end but guys if you do want to become a uh, patron uh, as you get do get to see behind the scenes or videos and clips and bits and pieces of what i'm currently working on and yeah if you're interested in sponsoring me there's an e uh, email down below um, send me an email guys. So I then went over with some silver um, dry brushing. Uh, for some reason I didn't film that, don't know why. And then it was that the fun stuff of making this into a rust bucket. So I watched a few videos because it's been a while since I've made any rust and something someone had used is the uh, the spices. Um, just obviously to give the, the thing some texture. But well, the only spice I had was this one. Uh, but the thing I liked about this one is I quite like the colour as it kind of already had a bit of a, a rust sort of colour going for it. And then it's simply a case of popping glue, well, anywhere really. Um, I was putting quite a bit of glue in between the joins of the uh, the tiles, just obviously sort of, sort of hide that, make that look a bit neater. Uh, but then in general, I was just sort of splodging a bit of glue here, there, and everywhere. Uh, no real pattern to it, as obviously this is going to be like a spaceship that's been floating around derelict for hundreds of years, so there will just be rust everywhere. And then it was a case of keep repeating the process, putting some glue down, putting the spices over the top, and then just sort of brushing it, brushing it around basically. Um, and yeah, just kept on rinse and repeat in that process until the whole thing was complete. So it's now been two weeks since I bought my first sort of 40k um, starter set. Obviously I've got two teams fully sort of painted. Um, I've now got a board painted uh, and I also got most of the bits and pieces that go on the board, obviously the scatter terrain. Um, I've got loads of that sort of semi painted. So yeah, I think I've accomplished more in these two weeks uh, with Warhammer than I have in the past two years with the thing. So I will be painting and assembling a lot more kill teams. Um, and I am considering doing some battle reports. So guys, let me know in the comments which teams you'd like to see me make next. And yeah, if you would like to see me make some battle reports. So obviously once everything was done, uh, just try and keep my desk relatively tidy. I then got the old vacuum cleaner and sucked up any excess spices. So yeah, there's a lot, a lot obviously remained that was glued in place. Um, but yeah, quite a lot obviously did come off as well. 
but I'm really pleased with the uh, the outcome. Obviously, if I wanted to make it even rustier, I could just sort of put more glue over obviously these dried bits of uh, spices. But um, yeah, no, I'm very uh, very happy with how this turned out. If you guys do any rust effects, let me know. Um, so obviously, it's always good to sort of try new things out. And then what I was left with was this lovely sort of rough texture. Um, I say the spices work really well because they are very fine. So even though this is textured, it's kind of like a fine textured. And yeah, really pleased with that. So the tiles that I used at either end of the board are going to be perfect for putting the, uh, the yellow warning chevrons on. Uh, and these are also the right sort of distance um, to start your team. Obviously there's a whole variety of ways of uh, doing these sort of kill zone games. Um, obviously sometimes you start at the very ends, sometimes a bit more in the middle. Well, wherever really. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I've made these end bits with uh, the chevrons, obviously good old warning sort of uh, lines. And yeah, as you can see, I've just got a sponge that I've ripped up a bit. And then a uh, little dab will do you sort of thing. Yeah, so just sort of dab the yellow paint on. And the great thing obviously about doing the dabbing bit, it does then make it look like the uh, the paint's even sort of worn and uh, chipped away, which is pretty cool. So as much as the spices did have sort of like a, a really decentish colour, as in like the orangey sort of thing, um, I did want to go over it and make it, well, make it even look more rustier. So I've had, I've had this uh, Vallejo Rust Wash. Um, well, I've probably had this about nearly two years now, I think. Um, so it lasts quite well. Uh, there's still a good half bottle there. Um, and yeah, it was just a case of getting me a big, uh, a big makeup brush and sort of, again, good old dabbing it. Um, yeah, dabbing it on here and there. And obviously being the wash, it does sort of like, it's very watery. So it sort of like moves into little sort of gaps and areas. And yeah, it looks really good. So the other thing I did to make it look a bit more sort of rusty looking and just generally weathered, and that is I got some copper paint. Um, and again, sort of lightly dry brushing. Um, I haven't sort of wiped off the paint on a, um, a kitchen towel or anything. So some places it's going to be quite heavy and other places not so much. Because I do love the look of obviously the, um, the brushed sort of silver, but I really do like the, sort of the, uh, the copper look over the top. Um, just because again, it makes it look a whole lot more rustier. And then just sort of finish it off, let's, um, let's add a bit more sort of rust effect. Um, but this time so I've gone for a darker brown, um, again on the sponge, and just dabbing it here and there. Although from some of the videos I've watched, people normally do the darker colours, and then will dab on sort of a lighter sort of brown or orange afterwards which from what I've looked at does look better uh, but obviously I've done mine the wrong way around but hey ho never mind as I was definitely pleased with how this came out and how it looks so yeah guys that's about the end of it let me know in the comments what you think of this board um, let me know if there's anything you would have done differently or let me know if there's any other kind of boards you think I should make um, so this board has had a game now um, and yeah it worked really well and I can't wait to get the new Warhammer 40k kill team set into the dark as that will work so well with obviously this kill zone. Okay guys, that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share where possible. Leave plenty of comments down below guys. And yeah, take care. Bye for now.